This is NBR Today. Shares of New Zealand banks have risen substantially as the New Zealand banking sector digested the Australian Royal Commission's report outlining widespread misconduct in the banking, superannuation and financial services industry across the Tasman. The report contains 76 recommendations and, according to media reports, the Australian government has agreed to adopt 75 of them. Analysts say the local stocks are mirroring what's happened with shares in Australia because the Hain report wasn't as bad as expected. The main messages coming through from Australian-owned local banks is that they're already putting their own houses in order ahead of an end-of-March deadline responding to the Reserve Bank and FMA's review of Conduct and Culture, published in November. The government has already agreed to fast-track customer protection measures in the financial sector following that review and a more damning insurance report last week by the regulators. Three former directors of Viaduct and Mutual Finance have been convicted on fraud charges at Auckland High Court. Paul Bublitz, Richard Blackwood and Bruce McKay have been found guilty and convicted of charges relating to theft in a special relationship and false statements by a promoter. Bublitz and Blackwood were each found guilty on four charges and McKay was found guilty on three charges. The FMA opened its second case against the trio after the first trial in 2017 was ruled a mistrial following procedural failings by the Crown. The allegations included that Mutual's prospectus failed to disclose related party transactions with Viaduct. The trio were remanded on bail to appear for sentencing on March 27th. A new fund is seeking to raise up to $100 million for investment in cryptocurrencies, but its share offer has already been criticised. Disclosure documents for the offer of shares in Crossgate Capital were filed on January 28th and the offer opened on February 4th. The idea is to make it easier for investors who may not understand the technical complexities to buy cryptocurrency. But financial advisor Brent Sheather says Crossgate's annual management fee of 3% is, quote, much, much higher than most low-cost equity funds. Mr Sheather, who's not a fan of cryptocurrency, points out that with Crossgate's offer, there is likely to be limited, if any, liquidity in the shares once they've been allotted. Crossgate has chosen 18 digital coins for investment, including Bitcoin and Ethereum. Christchurch-based social network app Roma has secured $250,000 in funding to boost user numbers and springboard it into more cities, including the U.S. market. Emily Heaselwood launched Roma in late 2017 to connect people with personalised and local activities or experiences, and it has already attracted a solid user base and a handful of high-profile Kiwi technology investors and entrepreneurs. In a yet-to-be-determined second investment round, Ms Heaselwood hopes to raise between $1.2 million and $1.5 million. Ms. Heaselwood's company has seen over 45,000 downloads since its launch and has already successfully expanded into Australia and Singapore. A Waikato-based medicinal cannabis startup is set to become New Zealand's first listed medicinal cannabis company within a few months. Canna South has just secured new licences to import, cultivate and research medicinal cannabis from the Ministry of Health. Canna South already had licences to possess controlled drugs, which allowed the company to extract, process and manufacture cannabis products for scientific research. Last year, the company signalled its intention to list its shares on the NZX through an IPO in the second quarter of 2019 and now says it's on track to do so. Law changes that will allow the manufacture and sale of medicinal cannabis in New Zealand are expected to come into effect by year end. To tomorrow, well, it's Waitangi Day and MBR's Neville Gibson previews what's likely to happen with unemployment when the labour market surveys come out on Thursday. So for more on that and all of our other stories, do head to our website and have a great Waitangi Day. To unlock your two free articles a week, head to mbr.co.nz.